Tracking your hormones and what's happening seems like the biggest mystery. I meet women all the time so confused about what's going on in their bodies. And my answer is often, as I've talked about in the hormone shift, get your hormones checked, know your data, let's put them on a spreadsheet and know where you feel good, but also know where you feel bad because then we find your normal and that's the number that we should be coming back to over and over again. But what if it's not realistic to keep going to the lab, getting your hormones checked, or you forget you're just too busy to complete a test or to complete a test kit? I know, I've been there. And what I'd like to do is show you some ways you can track your hormones on your own using the wisdom of your body without even having the data in front of you, although I like the data. So let's break it down on some of the numbers that you can record. Maybe you have a journal, maybe you have your phone and you're just putting them into your phone, however you want to do it. But you should have a journal all about you where you're tracking, you're understanding and getting a sense of what your body's doing. Now, the one number I like to look at, and you can naturally get this number if you've got a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, definitely if you have some of the fancier stuff like the Woof or the Aura Ring, is heart rate variability. HRV, or heart rate variability, is a measure of your body's sort of stress bandwidth or tolerance. For example, when you get super stressed, your heart rate goes way up and then it should come down. But if it's not naturally coming up and down effectively and it's staying elevated, for example, or staying really low for some reason, then you don't have good heart rate variability. The ideal HRV number is somewhere between 40 and 60 for most of us. I met patients for whom their HRV is around 18. They're in deep adrenal fatigue or people who can't get it above a five or six. We wanna understand what's going on. So one of the things you can do is track your HRV, which will tell you what your cortisol levels are doing, for sure. If your HRV is not between that 60-ish, 50 to 60 range, then I know you're having an issue with adrenal fatigue and cortisol regulation. So HRV is one marker you can do at home, you can use with your Fitbits or Apple Watches, which I'm sure the majority of you already have. Let's move on to another one. Another way to sort of get a sense of what your body's doing is to look at basal body temperature. There are many different ways to check your temperature. Most people do it under the arm. You could do the forehead or you could do it under the mouth. The key is to be consistent. Don't try different ways of measuring and tracking because then the data will be all confusing. But tracking your temperature throughout a 30 day cycle, right, as a woman, I think is really helpful information. Here's what we learned. If your body temperature is low, you're falling below roughly a 97 or so, then more than likely, you may have some degree of hypothyroidism, meaning a sluggish thyroid or a poorly functioning thyroid. If on the other hand, it's high, you're getting into the 99s or so, you may have an overactive thyroid you want to stay roughly around 98. Now it's always interesting to look at your basal body temperature as your cycle approaches for those of you still getting a cycle. You'll often find that it drops just for the week before your cycle. And if it's doing that and doing it more than about a degree or so, then you may also be low in progesterone. So that's a way you can sort of start to piece your hormone information together. All right, so HRV, and now we're also talking about basal body temperature. Let's do a couple more. Looking at your sleep cycle. Now I'm assuming again, you've got a Fitbit or Apple watch. And if you look at your sleep cycle on those, and let's say you don't have an aura ring or any of these other gadgets that are out there right now. And you're looking at these Apple watches, you should be getting at least 90 minutes of deep sleep and 90 minutes of REM sleep over a six to eight hour sleep cycle. So look at the length of your sleep and then see if you're getting those amounts of sleep for those phases. If you guys are not getting enough REM sleep, then you're either low in estrogen, low in progesterone, or you're having elevated cortisol levels again. So you can go back to your HRV and back to your basal body temperature and try to put those puzzle pieces together. So looking at your sleep is a critical part of the data about you and looking at it kind of on a day to day or week to week basis helps you understand sort of what's emerging out of all of this to, to really educate you on what your hormones are doing. All right, let's do, I think about one more. Let's talk about blood sugar, your blood sugar. Now there's so many great ways to track blood sugar in these days, right? You could do it by your symptoms where, you know, how are you feeling? Do you get hangry? Those are signs your blood sugar's off. 
But it's so easy to get a glucometer now and stick it in your arm and pair it to your phone and understand what your blood sugar levels are doing. If they are persistently high, which for me is above 80, then you have some degree of insulin resistance or blood sugar instability that we need to deal with. If they are too low, you're having some reactive hypoglycemia, so you're now having a cortisol insulin sort of dysfunction, and we need to get a sense of what's going on there. So understanding your blood sugar and tracking those patterns can be incredibly helpful to understand what your body is doing with insulin, cortisol, and even leptin. All right, I lied, I said that was the last one. I actually have one more, your blood pressure. Blood pressure, remember, really helps us understand the heart, responsible for how the body's pumping fluid and blood through. If your blood pressure is chronically low, which I define as under about 100 over 60, then you're having, again, adrenal fatigue, which in turn is going to lead to thyroid instability and low progesterone. If your blood sugar, on the other hand, is high, above 135 over about 85 or so, then you're dealing again with maybe high insulin, high estrogen, and it's important to dial into that as well. So as you can see, there's so much basic information you can get from tools and techniques used at home before you even get to a lab kit or a lab test to really get more information about your hormone levels. So I'm still all for getting those hormone levels checked and I talk a lot about how to check your hormones in this video right here, but at the same time for anyone who's busy running around, it's hard to get to the lab, maybe you're a mom and you're juggling, work and kids and so much more. These are some of the other ways that you can start to understand you and put your puzzle pieces back together. All right, I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.